Hello my beautiful beans and welcome back to the channel. We've all been there. You have an island, a finished island, a pretty island, but yet something feels off. You like it and you're happy with it, but yet you can't shake the feeling it could be better. So you do what any logical Animal Crossing player does. Just kidding, this island was my first ever island. The island I started with back in 2021 and had already completed the bug Critopedia. So I didn't really want to start all the way over. And with that, the only other option for a clean slate was to completely flatten my island and start building from the ground up. My reasons for wanting to do this is because between 2021 and now I've done a, a lot of islands and also have learned a lot when it comes to terraforming and builds, so I wanted to apply what I learned to my improved 2.0 island. Around the time of starting this, probably a year ago at this point, it became a thing where a lot of other Animal Crossing creators started to create the concept of a forever island. And that was the goal for the 2.0 version of my island. An island that will never be deleted and will be the island I actually play on, with the goal of adding decorations for every season or holiday. And you might be asking, but Mercia, flattening and rebuilding an island sounds like it took a long time. And the answer to that is yes, yes it did. I did this process over several months in my own time, so I don't really have any footage of this until some of these smaller builds and filler towards the end were streamed or uploaded as a speed build. But to save you the pain of watching possible hours of footage, here's the island. The before, as you will. And to kick off what would be a, a long process, I moved all the buildings to the beach and removed all the bridges and inclines, just like so. After this, it was just a matter of removing the water, the upper cliffs, and the lower cliffs, which left us with a completely flat island. So, now it was time to build it back up in a new and refreshed way. It took me a long time to figure out how I wanted it to look, but eventually I had the lower cliffs, and then the upper cliffs, and the water. Some bridges and inclines later and I had the base done. Now this process was done over like weeks if not months. I wish it was as easy as I'm showing you here. So then it was just deciding where the facilities go, where the villagers will live and I also added a second resident for my husband on the beach below my house. And well, here we are. A new and completely refreshed island when this is what we came from. Looking at the two maps side by side, you can really tell back then I was a little afraid to mess with the natural river, whereas nowadays I'm just like, wow, yeah, okay, let's not do that. And just go ham with the waterscaping. Corners like this and big open empty spaces like this might seem a little odd compared to the rest of the island, but trust me, they make sense with the decorations. But here it is. From a confusing aroma between a forest and a flowery meadow to a mysterious and consistent forest core acropolis. A 100% the same island, 20% use of references and only 99% loss of sanity. What a deal. Could I have done this faster? Yes, but I wanted a project to work on in my own time and now almost a year after on and off progress, it is finally done. Am I thinking of small things to add to the island as I'm writing the script for this video? Absolutely, but that's a future Mercia problem to worry about. But now let's take a look at some of the changes and points of interest I wanted to refresh in the new build, such as the farm, a fishing spot, the outdoors coffee and reading spot, and a spiritual place alongside the usual facilities and houses, starting with the entrance. The redecorating part of this process was the most fun to me and I think safe to say would be for anyone. Being able to remodel my island is almost like applying a facelift to this island. 
using new and improved custom designs and a different way of using decorations from everything that I've seen or even done on some of my other islands was really refreshing. This island almost became a town core island but I just couldn't figure it out and decided to stick with the same theme I started this island with which is force core. It took me weeks to mess around with street pathing but once I made the decision to stick in my comfort zone and keep the theme as it was I had so much more fun remodeling. At some point during this process I also decided as this was going to be my forever island that I wanted to work towards 100%ing the game. So that meant every Nook Miles Plus achievement, a completed Critopedia, and also every reaction available. And that meant I had to switch out two of my villagers, as some reactions are only obtainable from the different personalities, as I went through in this video. So Fleur became Fang and Anchovy became Roswell. But speaking of villagers, let's take a look at their new surroundings. So we have Anka. Roswell, who was anchovy, Dom, Wade, Molly, Fang, who was flurry, Bunny, Agnes, Lily, and Poppy. I decided to keep their exteriors as they were, but I will quote unquote fix their interiors at some point soon. The difference along the shoreline alone is already incredible. I absolutely love, love, love how this island turned out and I'm stoked to continue working as time goes on while working on these achievements. Since we all know by now that New Horizons is pretty much abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> the museum is for sure one of my favorite areas and was also one of the areas where I 100% knew what I wanted and how I wanted to do it. Totally not biased or anything. Anyway, is it a little laggy in some areas? Kinda? But honestly, I don't know how because I feel like those areas aren't that much more decorated than the non-laggy ones. But oh well. I'm still incredibly happy with everything and I'm also happy to finally be done with the remodel. And with that, it is finally time to update our precious dream address and officially say goodbye to what was before. It's incredibly bittersweet, but very much needed. Goodbye, old Ruda Reeve, ye shall be missed. And with that, here is the completely new and updated dream address. So now if you'd like to visit yourself, you can. It's right here on the screen and I will also put it in the description box below. Thinking back, I regret not recording the process here and there at least, but back then I didn't really know that I want to make it a video, so here we are. I realize this video isn't super exciting nor super long, but I hope you all still enjoyed watching how I turned my old first island into what it is now. It's been a long and kind of grueling process, but now we can just vibe out and turn to the suffering of catching 5,000 bugs and fish. Wait, 
But again, I hope you all enjoyed watching and feel free to like and maybe subscribe for more Animal Crossing content coming to a YouTube feed near you soon. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you all stay happy and healthy. But for now, until next time, goodbye.